Welcome to the second episode of Which Way From Here. And you guys, I am so excited to bring this episode to you. Rachel and I interview my dear, dear friend, Mary Treen of Treen Light Healing. She is an intuitive guide, an energy healer, and the host of Intuitive Seek, this amazing podcast where she takes a very grounded approach to talk about all things magical and energetics and the woo, if you will. Mary is one of my all-time favorite people on the planet, and you're going to see for yourselves just how amazing she is through this interview. So I don't really have much of a preamble here because the interview speaks for itself. So on that note, welcome to Which Way From Here. Okay, welcome to another episode of Which Way From Here. I'm Corinne Labita. Rachel Dunkel here. And And today we are talking to my very good and very dear friend, Mary Treen of Intuitive Seek. Welcome, Mary. Mary. Thank you so much for having me. Which way from here? I am so excited for this podcast. I am very inspired that you are doing it and bringing it to the people and your point of view and your grounded perspective. And yeah, very excited. So good (laughs) You're hired. Her, right. Welcome our new vice president of marketing, Mary <laughs> Treen. Right. No, but um, Mary's Mary's here today to tell us all about her practice. And I'm like super jazzed to, to learn about it because, you know, I'm not as familiar with, you know, with I, this is the first time that we've met. But of course, you and Corinne have known each other. And um, just to hear about like your story and what you do and what the future holds for you and just anything that you feel, you know, guided to say and and yeah. you know looking forward to it i love that where would you like me to begin should i start with corinne do you have any oh wait you know maybe because corinne knows more that she's gonna ask the like hard questions so i'll ask like the you know easy questions like uh so how seriously though how did you like like this is this is your this is your practice. This is your profession. This is what you do day in and day out. So like yeah. how, which is amazing because, you know, how did you discover this passion and how did you um, kind of get started, I guess? Yeah, it was quite, quite a long journey. That's where, yeah, that's where I'll start that everything that I say, just add like five to 10 years on it as I jump through because it definitely took a while to get to where I am, where now I work full time as an intuitive guide and healer. And yeah, with women from around the world through Zoom, which I would never have thought even, even five years ago. Shocking, shocking to me. So I just want to put that there first, that yeah. The world has changed and there is a whole changed. new way of communicating, which was, you know, probably, um, you know, in a way it's like very scary when you're used to even like being in an office every day or like yeah. being with people every day. And then you're like, you know, kind of pulled away from each other and you're doing this virtual thing. You're like, well, how is this going to work? And so maybe a good next oh, question is like, let's talk about what is this? Tell me what an intuitive healer like does and. Yeah, I love it. So I'll go back just a little bit. I started remembering my connection to my intuition, started remembering my, I put them under an intuitive umbrella, but that is, you know, all the psychic clairs, any mediumship connection. I really, I, one of the things that I've experienced is when you allow yourself to be able to connect without putting constraints on, am I psychic? Am I a medium? Am I clairvoyant? Am I clairsentient? If you just explore your energy and the way you connect, you are all of those things. If you want to. I am. I am. Totally. Not trying to define it and just, Jen, just be it. So, um, you know, you mentioned intuition. So for maybe somebody who's not entirely sure, like what is, what is intuition? What does that even mean? If you had to like, kind of, 
Uh, we just talked about not defining things, but you know, like, no. what is, let's what describe. Is intuition? Let's yeah. describe. Let's Thank describe. You. I'm going to yeah. start, you, I'm going to steal that, by the way. We'll describe it. I, uh, so the one thing for me is I was a very intuitive child. And then when I was around 11, hormones, experiences, I completely shut that off, which is very common, a very common story. And I just went through my life and was really living quite untethered, always super creative, huge amount of anxiety, huge amount of depression, a lot of emotional, I would say, waves without any kind of diagnosis. I was lucky to not have any kind of bipolar disorder or anything like that. But is that something that you tried to like, did you try to define it and put a label on it? And oh, okay. All right. Definitely. But I never had those. I never checked all the boxes, but there was something missing. So for me, in hindsight, these are all kind of manifestations of me not having any connection to my intuition, which for me is that connection of my energy that holds everything that I would ever need to know. And also the translator for anything that I would ever want to connect to in this world and in the unseen. So in all aspects. So my intuition was not a factor in any choices I made, any where I went. But it was something that yelled at me through my body and my emotional experiences. So when I went through, yeah, to just accept that and, you know, but was there a point at which you're, you were like, this is it. Like, this is what I'm, how did that feel? Like when you, cause like you push against like everything you're not maybe push against, but you know, you try to make sense of it. And then you've got all these forces working against you, not only like, you know, the growth and the hormones and everything Mm -hmm. that you mentioned, but also a lot of external forces, you know, in every direction. So like, it's very brave for you to go. I just need to feel what I'm feeling and that's okay. And so like, what was that moment like for you? Well, I kind of moved through my life. I I'm from Canada. So I grew up in Alberta and then I just kind of flew. It's all kind of floating. It feels like, because I just, and this was me working with my intuition without really understanding it, but I would receive opportunities to go places, move different places, start something with somebody, work with them. And I would just go, I would have that kind of instinct of, well, change is better. So I was always changing. So I, you know, after high school, went and lived and worked at this like five-star resort in this mountain community in Alberta. And then from there, I met somebody who lived in Vancouver. And so I was like, oh, I've always wanted to go to Vancouver. So I went to Vancouver and I've been here for 16, 17 years now. And that's where I live. And then somebody really loved my art because I was an artist and I was also a makeup artist. And they were like, oh, you know, you can do that for a living. And I thought, oh, I didn't know that because I was really in my head. I was very much just going with the flow. University didn't work out for me fully. Any kind of full vocation, I had no idea about. I was really living in the present, partying a lot, drinking a lot, you know, a lot of fun hanging out with a lot of musicians, all of that great stuff, but no groundedness at all. And so I started working as a makeup artist and I was like, oh, this is so fun. And then I got tethered into the business aspect and I just followed the money. So the more money they gave me, the less art I was doing and the more business I was doing. And so I started to take more courses and classes and business admin and everything. And I ended up in this corporate job making a nice amount of money, married to a man that I loved. And then when I was 28, he decided to tell me who he really was and that he was cheating on me like crazy, not the person I knew, totally unexpected. So like a classic Saturn return. My whole life. Everybody's been talking about Saturn. (laughs) 
<laughs> it fell apart. It's oh. a real thing. Goodness. It's a real thing. Well, that's another. We'll have you. We'll have you back, and we'll do another. Uh, yeah. Episode on Everybody <laughs> out there, crazy making. Siren if turn you, is yeah. Rough. If you are past that age, go back and look, and it'll just give you some great insight into what was happening for you. If you're at that age, just hold on. Just it's okay. Hold, you're so, get through it. Things gonna be okay <laughs> because everything crumbled. And the one thing about turning off and just hiding my authentic self and my connection to my intuition and any kind of spiritual aspect to my life at all is my heart was completely hardened. I had not an open heart, not a trusting bone in my body, did not trust one person, Mm -hmm. which is amazing because I trusted this man who ended up not being trustworthy. Mm -hmm. But as soon as my heart was shattered that way, when I had to you know, close the door on what my thought my life was, I all of a sudden realized, oh, I have thoughts and feelings and actual ideas about what life should be. Life doesn't just have to be shitty and then fun on the weekends, which is what I thought it was. And I went through a lot of things. Have you been spying on me? No, I'm (laughs) Well, it's so funny, right? You like, for me, I, when I wasn't living from within, living from my intuition, from my energy, from my heart, from my soul, I was leading from the outward. I was leading from outward validation, affirmation. Do they think it's a good idea? Every decision was a group decision. Like there was never any clarity in my life without a council. With a, what, what everybody else's idea of what you should should be doing and who you should be and how you should react to things and handle things. And yeah, exactly. That's tough. That's why this like saying, this is like a brave thing. Just kind of go. Cause it's a scary moment probably, you know, I mean, for some people, you know, like I'm thinking if you're like raised very religious, you know, and I'm Mm -hmm. nothing against that, of course, but I mean, I, I personally was, so you don't, you know, you've, you've got this guidelines to go by. And so you got to, you got to really look at that voice inside of you because it may be a trick, maybe a trickster. It may be leading you down the wrong path or you try and you try to quiet it and people don't listen to their, to that and to their body. So Rachel, are you saying like religion teaches that, that you shouldn't trust your inner wisdom or. I think two degrees, certain ones do definitely. I think they definitely are. Um, fundamentalists you know yeah um jesus jesus was the god in the bible was the bible and that's fine but i think those type of religions being raised in one um i think that's what you tell yourself and and there's a lot of guilt there and there's a lot of shame there and there's a lot of like man if i do this there's no going back right 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 so and i don't know if it's different from others but anyways Yeah. Um, And a lot of people have fear of what are they opening themselves up to? What am I actually experiencing? And yeah, so much of us have been, many of us have been just conditioned that we don't know. We don't know what's best for us. If something feels good and right, why does it feel that way? Is it actually a good idea? It must must be bad. It must be sinful. So, and this is the last question I'll ask because I really want to get into like technicality. (laughs) Well, me personally, or it'll just be a whole thing. Uh, It's going to be the Rachel show. Um, So, like, I guess, like, and Karen can get into into the more technical kind of stuff. But my thing is, like, you know, initially when you're thinking this, as I'm sure a lot of people do, it's like, what's the process? And you're like, how do you do that? Yeah, I'll tell you, because the best part about my journey in hindsight, and I have to say journey because there's no other word. I've tried to look for it. It's probably one of the most annoying words in my lexicon, but it's just the way. It's the way. My journey, my healing journey, my spiritual journey, my intuitive journey, however you want to call it, I didn't go into it in a compartmentalized way. So I wasn't actually aware of, you know, I had friends that, you know, pulled tarot and a little bit here and there, but no psychic, full psychic, you know, friends or people that really were open about their connection and how they could use it as a modality. I had experienced energy healing, but way before, like 2000 was the last time until I found Reiki again in 2016. 
So it was a long time, but I was searching. So what happens? I get a divorce. My life falls apart. I start building it again. I fall in love with an amazing man. And then all of a sudden my heart is healing. I'm open to more, but my career is pulling me down. I am so depressed in my career, even though I am winning awards, super successful. Everybody is very happy around me, my bosses, my employees, all the things. But I was so unhappy, like so unhappy, so much anxiety. Every day I would drive to work and I would be praying to, and I would always say, God, the universe, whoever, Mm -hmm. please show me my purpose. I cannot do this anymore. I cannot do this. And I was having so many kind of dark nights of the soul on the bathroom floor. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I hate this. I hate it. Even though on paper, yeah. it's totally fine. Right. No problem at all. But it was so unaligned that it was like itching in fire in my body to get out. So I started practices to manage it. I started meditating. And I had never meditated before. Ooh, that's hard. Ooh, meditation. So I started meditating and I couldn't just sit there. I was like, what is this? And then all of a sudden, my imagination started going. And I was listening to nature music. And then I brought myself to a space in nature in my mind's eye. And then all of a sudden, I was there. I was in this space. And my grandmother came in who had passed when I was 15. And it was so visceral and so specific that I was bawling. And it felt so natural that all of a sudden, here's my grandmother and we're talking and she's telling me why my mom doesn't understand me. She's telling me why it's my purpose to help break this generational cycle of the women in my family hiding their light and cutting off their voices and numbing themselves. And then I met my uncle who passed when he was six months old. And he was there with my grandma as like a man. And this is all in meditation. So that's the motivation. That's the motivation to start meditating. If you haven't had it before. Come on. Wow. I've never (laughs) wanted to meditate so hard in my life. It's wild. It's wild. But I didn't know what was happening because I wasn't doing it on purpose. There was no like blueprint for it. I was just opening myself up to help me, help me, help me. But I didn't know who was coming. And then there 180, man, from like what you were going through, like prior to that, you know, it's like wild. Yeah. Right. Where I thought, oh, I thought I was just trying to like, you know, take away this anxiety in my body this like hive of bees that's like just constantly in me Mm -hmm. but no that was just like the siren being like hello we're not using any of of this yeah Yeah. so when I come came out of that meditation I started writing 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 and I was like why am I crying so much that was so real started googling things my grandma told me so I was like what is that real and it was like yep yep and she told me my uncle's nickname who had died like when he was six months old and I asked my mom about him and she was like, oh, how did you know his name was that? Like, it was all of these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like very beautiful. So beautiful though. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what was happening though. I still didn't put it together. And so I was talking to a therapist I was working with and they luckily had an energy healing background and were more spiritual. So I explained this experience that I had. It's this wild experience. Meditation is amazing. Oh my God. Like all these things. And she right. said, Oh, I didn't know you were a medium. And I was like, what is what is that? Neither did I. Funny you should mention that. Well I didn't even think didn't even think I loved a medium, the show when I was, you know, a kid. I loved but I never really thought of I wasn't in the medium realm. I wasn't going to see you know, John Edwards or Teresa Caputo right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't part of. Or I was quite a, Cleo up every day when you I were was like quite 10 a years old. Yeah. Yeah. I was always that trust muscle. I was just like, don't bullshit people. This is very sacred. Don't pretend that you're talking to their loved ones. Like I remember having like a lot of rage before I mm-hmm. really understood what it was. Mm-hmm. So then my uh, person, she was like pretty um, a psychic as well and quite spiritual. So we talk about it. And she talked to me about my like awakening and all these gifts that were coming. And 
I said, well, you know, you know, we talk about this, like you, you haven't done this. And she said, well, no, I don't talk to dead people. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh, fuck. I feel like y'all were on the same page. Yeah. Like, I was just gonna say, like, you're so lucky to have a therapist who's like understanding yeah. of this side of you and, and yeah. encouraging you. And then it's like, well, I mean, still did, obviously, which is yeah. Like, but um, another timing part, right? Because I found this person, I just had to follow. I'm like, I need somebody. Exactly. This person looks good, and then perfect timing. Part of the way. It's a. Stu- it's a. It's. Part of the way on the way, part of the journey, not saying journey anymore. I'm saying way from now on. (laughs) I like that part of the way, which way here. Oh yeah. There you go. Look at that. (laughs) We just found our third. It's a tripod. (laughs) Oh my God. I love it. (laughs) Whether you like it or not, Mary, you're on a second podcast. I already have like a list of like 20 different things you can just talk (laughs) about for like an hour and I would just love it. So um, I appreciate the, no, I appreciate the platform because it's so fun to talk about this because it's not something I think about all the time right so it's fun to look back on it and yeah I just like it because so many people that I hear that do similar work to me it's like oh yeah when I was a kid there were spirits in my room and you know all of these things and I had a different experience mine Mm -hmm. really I remember seeing energy because I see energy like objectively in the world energy fields and auras however you want to call it Mm -hmm. but it wasn't something that I connected to, and then I shut it off because I couldn't do it. No, it all happened very just organically for yeah. me. Wow. It was so crazy. You've mentioned like, okay, one more question. I lied. There's oh, yeah. going to be one more. Um, I think I snuck like five or six in there too while you're talking, but That's cool. um, <laughs> so, um, so you've mentioned multiple times, and this is like the meat and potatoes. This is where I like really am going to hand it off to the expert um, of definitely the two of us in this situation um, is, you, you've talked about the work like yeah what what's the work like well it's kind of interesting because after that meditation experience I started doing it all the time writing down bringing intentions in I love a research so I just started deep diving into different ways people do people's theories on it their philosophies like what's happening and I started really now in hindsight I started exercising And just kind of, you know, getting that muscle of my intuition and all of the gifts associated with it going and getting to know it for myself. And so I started having a really clear connection to what my heart, my intuition was speaking through my heart to me with. And it was Reiki, 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 Reiki. And I was like, fuck, I don't want to be a Reiki person. Everybody does Reiki. Like it, I was a real, (laughs) I'm a person that's like, I don't to do it if nobody you know if everybody loves it it's you know, right like an angsty team would love to pretty see, easily like, your cd collection yeah right exactly now. exactly <laughs> <laughs> things you would never heard of no. <laughs> but Besides that kind of only. yeah that ridiculous you know side but um that i can laugh i don't know what you're talking i have no idea what you're talking about but um (laughs) the cool girl girl. right the cool girl yeah yeah we all want to be like (laughs) that's um it actually gets like the cute guy in the teen movie back in the 80s because she gets a makeover though not because she's like her authentic self no she took her glasses off come on Uh, Uh, she's beautiful But, so, okay, so, so back I went to Reiki before yeah. I derail this any further. So I found it online. I was it was really close to where I lived, this place that I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna sign up. It's expensive. I think it was like $250. And I was like, I'm spending $250 on something that might be total bullshit. Like it was a real trust exercise. I was like, I'm just mm-hmm. gonna do it. Mm-hmm. So I went. It was real. The people there were lovely, very kind of quote unquote normal teaching the art of using universal energy as a healing modality to help support other people's energy in themselves. So when I was there, I was like, oh, I've done this before. I've worked with this. Maybe I didn't know it was Reiki, but I felt this before. And then when I tried, we practiced. I put my hands on a woman on her shoulder and I put my hands on her shoulder and I just stayed there. And I was like, okay, I don't know why, but I just need to stay on your shoulder. And then she was like, okay. And then afterwards, took them off and she was like, wow. And I was like, what? And she like pulled her shirt down, huge bruise. She had just done like a horrible thing on her shoulder. And her whole, that's where 
Whoa. my intuition brought me to where the energy wow. healing was meant to go. And it helped relieve some of her pain, which is so lovely. So then I was like, oh, okay. That's a pretty good just, trial run there. Like a pretty good trial run. <laughs> so wow. Good. Okay. So I was elated, started doing it on myself, 21 days on myself, didn't do it on anyone else after that. That really felt like what I should do, connect to my own energy. So if anybody is training in Reiki out there, because so many people are, which is awesome, because we need it all over the world, any kind of healing modality. But you do one of the things, I'm just going to sidebar for a second, because I yeah, really feel like this is important. Most people get into it because they want to help other people. But the most important thing is to do it for yourself first, for at least 21 days. So not to give healing to anyone else, not to practice it on anyone else except for yourself because then you get to know your energy then you know what's Mm -hmm. yours and what isn't when you do start working with other people it's like one of the steps that really people go oh I just want to do you know level one and two and then they Mm -hmm. I'm a Reiki practitioner let me help you right and it is you can do a lot of harm that way I would and on yourself right I mean and others like a lot of people you, so Reiki, you can't really harm others with it. No. Like, it's not like you won't help them yeah, and you'll discourage it's, them probably well, from it's, doing it it's again. More, maybe it's more of one of those things where it's more harmful to the practitioner if they don't know what's going on. Like if they don't know their own energy and they're picking up other people's stuff, thinking that it's mm. them yeah. themselves and not properly clearing or whatever. Like it's actually, okay. yeah, it's not the the client that's ever in danger. Like it's susceptible. The, it's more, yeah, yeah. okay. It's, that it's makes sense. Definitely the, the it's the person that's yeah. opening themselves up to mm-hmm. give. And there is no boundary or awareness of what is actually happening. Exactly. So the lucky thing is I did that. Very, it feels so fortunate that I really listened to that. Because the first person I started working on All of a sudden, I could feel their tension, pain, an area on their body that needed attention. I could feel it in my body, but it wasn't in my body. Right. Because I had created an energetic boundary and gotten to know myself. So part of my practice started to be born by me getting to know my own energy. So some people call it like empathic expression, empathic healing, I think it's just part of an intuitive way that I utilize my energy, but that is a main part of my practice, especially online, is I tune into the person and then I feel whether their back is aching or if their neck is totally in pain or something happening maybe in their hip or their womb. But it's not me feeling that pain. It's my body being used as a mirror. Mm. And if you're not aware of your own energy, you could just be like, I can't do this work anymore. This is killing me. I have to be in bed all day. And that is a person that does not have proper boundaries. Does because that happen? This work, like, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. People are like, yeah. I can't do it anymore just because it depletes them. But it's mm-hmm. not really depleting them. They're just their energy fields are getting kind of mixed up and mm-hmm. a little perverted, just not being used the right way. How do you set that boundary? Like yeah. you get to learn your own energy and it's pretty, okay. and but you, you have just to say into- like, this is what I am. This is nothing's crossing this. I won't accept this or I'm going to like, yeah, but it's not that quick. Unfortunately, there's yeah. no fast way. You have to get to know your energy through practice. And then, you know, you set the intention. I will not take, you have your own way of saying whatever mm-hmm. works. And Yeah, but really getting to know your own energy is the number one base of any intuitive psychic mediumship practice when you are looking to connect and read or heal any anything that you want to use as a modality, knowing your energy, knowing when it's grounded, knowing when it's not yours, knowing what it is, all of those things. Energetic hygiene, some people call it like it just learned on yeah. that one too <laughs> yeah and you know this if you've been in an office and you walk in and everybody's quiet but you know that somebody just had a fight or somebody just did something super rude to somebody else 
but everybody oh, it's everything's fine but mm. you know you're like no what the fuck is going on in here something stinks in here we'll you're receiving in here. right all the energy even though there's nothing technically happening yeah so if you don't know that then you take that and you're angry all day or you snap at the person were they talking about me yeah was i the, was i the problem internalize it exactly so spread spread start talking to other people spread rumors mm-hmm. spread hurt i mean so you can see how this happens this is a pretty big thing that happens everywhere every all day every day <laughs> a real human thing yeah. so i learned how to do that and then i my modality just kind of came through i started developing more and every session that i had helped me learn more about what i could offer and what i did and i started you know as I was doing the energy healing, I was also connecting to a past life that may be connected to why this, you know, part of the diaphragm is always feeling tight. Or mm. maybe it's a loved one in spirit that is trying to get their attention to know something about what they're not listening to in their heart. So my whole purpose as a healer is I facilitate the healing that you are already able to do on your own, but I just create that container and bring it that support Mm -hmm. in that kind of not acceleration, but like activation. Yeah. Because Corinne has been, yeah, we, Corinne and I have worked together. Yeah. She, first of all, Mary is one of the most amazing practitioners out there, period. Like (laughs) she is outstanding and so I highly recommend doing sessions with her because, oh my goodness, they are visceral. And the other thing that I absolutely love about Mary is the fact that um, the way that she frames things where she, and, and I'm the same way, where um, it's really important that the individual who is getting the help understands that their body is doing the thing. And what Mary is doing is amplifying and facilitating creating the container like she just said but like it's not like she's coming down from on high no to heal you and Mm. and like any practitioner that anyone could come across that holds themselves kind of like in that teacher role or that i'm elevated role is someone that you don't really want to mess with if you don't want working on you interesting always 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 be within the context of your body's doing the thing i'm here to help it do it um more readily and help you remove any blocks or however like i'm not doing it boss versus a manager you know if i've ever heard that it's like not somebody who oh yeah who's doing it for you it's how they're helping you a mentor if you will almost for your how how we, we can do this and accomplish yeah. this together. I was telling you how a mentor. Well, I would think more of like a companion. So like more of a, co- more of a companion, more okay. of someone who is walking with you and guiding, but not necessarily leading. Right. Yeah. Got so it. Yeah. the way, yeah. Being so open to, Everything that's being communicated by the client, not just verbally, but everything, everything their energy is saying, everything their energy centers, their chakras, everything that, yeah, everything that flows in the, in the matter that we don't physically see or hear. Mm -hmm. I receive that and I reflect it back and it creates the space for incredible healing, which really just means accepting all the parts of you and releasing anything that's in the way of those parts being accepted. You make it sound so easy. And it's probably like one of the <laughs> hardest things that people can really yeah. do. It is. It's I mean, really, really challenging. Like everybody struggles with that. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is that it's actually, it is easy. Yeah. And the challenge is letting go of the narrative that says it should be hard. That anything that's worthwhile has to be worked hard for. Well, isn't that true? Yeah. yeah. And that when we let go of that narrative and accept the ease of, oh, our bodies just do this. We are designed yeah. to just let go, release, and not take on what is not us. Yeah. 
Um, and that that process is actually, uh, like I always say, it's just flowing like water where mm-hmm. it's the in and out. It's the breath, right? That we just naturally do and we naturally are. And at all of the challenges is the conditioning, the assumptions, yeah. the way we we crap on ourselves. Um, and then we hold all of that so tightly because we don't know how to be anything other than that. And we've had it for so long that it actually feels like death to let it go. Yeah. And there's That's no, true. what I find too, is there is such a, I don't want to say an inherent self-loathing but I will say it. We do have as a society. Well said. Yeah. In humanity, we really think that what I've experienced is we don't have it. We need something. We need the answer. We right. need somebody to open the door for us. We need somebody to give us the code or the key or the, you know, the activation or the all of those things. But just like Corinne said, it's more, it's an amplification. And Part of my work that I see now, even saying that, is I work a lot with um, intuitive animals. So kind of, I don't call them spirit animals or totems, not culturally, not in an indigenous way, but in a way that is more of an animist way, that everything is alive. And even our energy can translate to us an animal that is connected and guiding with us that actually reflects back to us our power or our talent or what we're going through and where we don't even realize it. So I really feel like the reason that my animals come in for people and their animals is because, so for instance, we'll say a lion is guiding. The person sees a lion, feels the energy of the lion, understands the meaning across cultures, connects to it, resonates and goes, you know, I think I am a leader. I think I do need to shine. I think I do need to sing oh. or use my voice. That is me. But I if just, you just looked at yourself. That's crazy. You wouldn't see it. Um, I literally just had I one of my friends came over last night. We haven't talked in a while, but she did. Um, and she's, you know, she's like, man, I wish I could have just taken you because you're like the only person I know who would like. Because she doesn't. It's not her. Mm-hmm. Again, she's not really, you know tuning into it but she's you know she's curious about it. so anyways she went to reiki for the first time like last week and she was talking about um black cat cardinal a white squirrel but like for different people and things that she's noticing and it was just so bananas that you said that because love it i was like and so then we did actually pull some cards and I forget which one it is, but it's the one with the, uh, it's the queen of wands where the black cat is sitting oh, yeah. at the feet. Yeah. And I was like, well, oh, there's that. Cat. There it is. Like, there anyways, it is. I didn't want to derail you. I just thought that was like, no, I love that. that. And we were like just talking about it last night. So, and that's crazy. how they show up is it's not just in your, when you meditate or when you feel, or when you're kind of connecting, it is in you pull a card and there it is, or you're at, you know, you're getting a coffee and there's a picture of one on a poster somewhere, right. or you look on all of a sudden, there's just like something on your Instagram or on YouTube. And it's all of these reminders of, okay, why, why am I being shown this? Like, what does it mean? And where is it resonating? And what am I not remembering about myself? What is it trying to remind me to do so that I can mm-hmm. not to be dramatic, but step into the path of my destiny. I mean, that yeah. is the purpose. Because there's a word for that too. What is it when you when you like buy a car and then you see the car all the time or it's some that oh yeah synchronicity right? Do we even try yeah. to think about it as this, as a society? There's like a term for that, and we've tried to say that it's just, oh it's just because you were looking at it or it's just because right. you meant somebody mentioned it right? Well, like the whole the it's not a sign, it's not a intuitive path right. is letting go of dismissiveness. Yeah. Right? Like it, like l- releasing out of the, um, the way that we're told to be hyper logical mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. intuition is an inherently irrational process where like shit just shows up and it resonates in your body. And the more you trust your, the sensations in your body and you trust yourself over everybody else's opinions about what should or shouldn't be suddenly those those things that just kind of pop up and they ping on your radar and like only you understand why that pings for you. 
and we're calling it synchronicity and we're calling it intuition. And it's just you revealing yourself to yourself constantly through all these different means. Yeah. And it manifesting is like a real thing in your life. Like it's a yeah. physical, you know, I think some people need that too. Everyone. Oh, yeah. they, and if we Everyone start accepting <laughs> that, like, man, what would the world be like? What would the world be like? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Cause there yeah. is, um, well, there's even, there's a Yiddish expression, the shirt, but it is in the modern world, it's about relationships, love relationships, romance, where it's, you find your soulmate, the person that completes your destiny, and then you complete the destiny of your family. But the root of it, like the original meaning of it was to fulfill your personal destiny, thereby fulfilling the destiny of the world. Because it keeps we got it back going out. Oh so my God, that is right? amazing. <laughs> and it's something that always comes back to me because a lot of it doesn't make sense. Most of the big strides or leaps or places you want to go or things you want to do, people are not going to understand. Right. And to take action when you're the only one supporting yourself to take that action is very challenging. Yeah. So keeping your eyes open for those signs and synchronicities, you allow that meaning to like buoy you, to help support you. But it doesn't mean that you're making the meaning up. It means that you are receiving it and using it for your highest good. You're creating your reason. Yeah. Yes. And you're like co-creating it. Mm-hmm. But really, wow. paying, but you have to pay attention. That's right. one of the things. That's and, the hardest part. <laughs> it sounds yeah. so easy from there. You sit down and you meditate one day, and yeah. then all of a sudden you're just like creating your own perfect destiny. Okay, That's where it. do I sign up? That's it. <laughs> Which is why I said add five years on everything I say. Because <laughs> it's not that fast. But the journey, the way, is totally worth it. Like you don't want it to be that fast because yeah. there's so much that unfolds, so much that has to be integrated, so much that you have to understand and realize like your timing is always on time if you're listening to yourself yeah absolutely well, speaking that's of a time one. speaking of time it's like you know I want to be respectful of yours and um I we've been you know going on until for almost an hour so I know you gotta you I can gotta do stay, a little but I can do I always um allow I, yourself I, a little buffer when I with Corinne, because we tend to talk a lot. So I'm always like, what? Okay, I only have this much, but really it's like 20 more than that. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Smart. But that's smart. very smart. <laughs> you can zoom in a lot. <laughs> so we have a little bit. No, when when okay. Mary and I get together, <laughs> uh, we need at least three hours. And it goes like <laughs> so, so fast. fast. <laughs> so fast. It's crazy. It's crazy. So what are your like, um, what are, what are your, Kind of big projects right now and what do you or if anything if what do you what are you working on what do you oh, yeah. okay, for the well, future thank you for asking well my business is called Treen light healing so that is the kind of um, umbrella that I work under and that's my Instagram and my website and there I offer one-on-one intuitive healing sessions where I utilize everything that I said so it really is informed by the person every step of the way but the whole time it is about understanding what is asking for attention, what is in the way of you accepting a part of yourself, and also what is that part of myself? What is it? I can't see Mm -hmm. it. So really bringing it in. But the main thing that I do is I do a four-month, I call it a package or a program or an experience, because just like Karim was saying, we work together for four months, and then my clients learn how to work with their own energy. So they don't have to see me every week forever or every month Mm -hmm. forever. It's Mm -hmm. like an intensive because I was noticing that people really like to come back, which is great, which is so lovely. I love my clients. I love people that want to come because everybody needs help and I love to Mm -hmm. serve, but I wanted to empower. So that's why I did the four months because it didn't feel as empowering when people were looking to me, like Corinne said, as somebody to give them the answers. Mm-hmm. because we can be resistant on just doing right. it. Right. So right. that's one of the main things that I do right now. And then I am doing distance sessions as well. So all my sessions are on Zoom, but the distance session has no video, nothing. We connect 
through space and time in the ether. You're at your place in Australia. I'm here in Vancouver. I send you healing, work with your energy, and receive a full reading detail of what's going on with your energy, what wants to come through, messages, animals, loved ones. It's always different, but Mm -hmm. it's so fun and so lovely. Was that a hard transition? I'm sure it was, but like, how was that transition to make from being like in person? Like, I did it once. It was COVID. COVID happened, couldn't do anything in person. I thought, I bet I could do this on Zoom. So I asked a client that I had been working with quite a long time for about two years. And I said, would you want to come? I'm going to give you like a free session. I just want to see what we can do on Zoom if it's going to be the same. And it was better. Hmm. I got to her energy in such a fast way that usually would take about 20 minutes of like discovery, checking in. And I realized that when we're in person, we have such a shield around us on purpose Mm -hmm. because we need it. Right. That when we are connecting through the conduit of a computer, through our internet connection, there's a way that I can connect to your energy when I'm, you know, allowed when it's mm-hmm. asked for it, mm-hmm. that is so quick and oddly effective in a way that an in-person session is still good, but we go so deep online. So with that first one, I was like, okay, I'm just doing this online. Mm-hmm. And Great. I can work with people from everywhere. And that's what happened. And they're probably a little more comfortable, like in their, you you're know, in your own space. hopefully they're in a space yeah. like where they're comfortable and able to um, kind yeah. of experience that. Yeah. Well, that's and what I, you do. You have your headphones on. Yeah. Corinne, you talk. I, I was just going to say like, and I had to do a testimony for Mary. Like there was one time uh, when we were working together and she um, was helping me break through some really intense barriers that were like, li- they were in my back. She like, she's like, okay, I'm going to take a hammer to this barrier. And she like energetically hammered my back to break up the the stuck energy. And my back was sore for a week afterwards. I'm like sore, like as if she had like used her elbows on me, like a deep tissue Mm -hmm. massage. I have never experienced anything like it before. Mm. And she's in Vancouver. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. And like the fact that she was able to do that kind of visceral, physical work was mind blowing. It is. It's always mind blowing to me too. It's wild. (laughs) But that's what shows that we are connected in a way that we don't really understand. Exactly. Because in those sessions, And when I'm doing it on Zoom, I do close my eyes when I'm doing the energy healing. And I just picture us as if we're in a physical session. But I work on the energy with my kind of energy body. So I am able to kind of like intend to break something up. Like I'm being shown what it looks like. And it may not technically be that, Mm -hmm. but that's the way it's shown to me. And that's what it needed. And in energy healing, it's so much clearing and filling that when you integrate it, it does feel bruised. It feels like an ache. It feels like you had a really deep tissue massage. And that is such a testament to our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual bodies are not separate. Exactly. Yeah. They're not. Our physical bodies are amazing because we get to experience stuff out of it. Yeah. But what's the cure for physical bodies today, right? Well, that's the tricky thing is not everything is meant to be cured. It's healing, right. not a cure. Or helped, okay? You know, yeah. you want your back hurts, you go to the chiropractor or you get, you know, a uh, medication or something. And it's like, yeah. could could be something that is more long-term, less invasive, less addictive, less traumatizing oh, yeah. to the body. Like, this is like, I mean, you're used to healing, but I don't think yeah. people think about it like that and the potential that like exists there. It's such a beautiful modality that works in tandem with other things. So when something, Mm -hmm. and that's what I always say, if you have an unexplained pain or tension, because physical ailments are real, they're not all manifestations of a spiritual disease. Right. I just don't 
I, that's not what I've seen. I've seen that there's both. There's both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when it's unexplained, that's your body and your soul and your heart saying, hello. Right now, I'm like moving my hands up and down like a little uh, siren radar. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> like spark- <laughs> I'm telling the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Because chest you're hands. having chest pains, right? Yeah. You're having chest pains because chest pains go to the doctor, and... and then if that doesn't work, call your energy healer. Right, <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Your local energy healer. Yeah, <laughs> but there but is if you're having chest only pain. if, right? Well, that with heart. That's when there is a lot of heart work to be done because that is kind of one of a big focus of my work because it was something that I went through so deeply too. Mm-hmm. A lot of those symptoms that are unexplained, that don't really make sense on why you would have pain or tension or numbness are stemming from not listening to your heart, not living from where your heart knows that you are supposed to be. So for me, being in the wrong career, wrong relationship, you know, not doing what I was meant to do, I had like a frozen left shoulder, like it was numb. I had numbing in my hands sometimes because mm. our hands are little sub chakras of our heart. It's how we can move the energy of our heart out. Mm. And any kind of itchiness rash on the chest, that is also something that I've seen quite often. So it's like really paying attention to what is happening mm. and letting your intuition, this is most important too, speak to you through your imagination. Mm -hmm. Let your imagination go. Oh, maybe this is something to do with my heart. No, 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 no. That's crazy. No. Okay. Imagination. Show me more of that. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, am I like, is there, am I itching my palm? Is there something that I'm doing that my heart is like, this is actually like an allergy in your life. Like this is inflaming your body and spirit. So are you in a wrong relationship? Do you have a boss that you are not speaking up to? Or is there something you're meant to be saying, but you're keeping it down? Mm. Like there's a lot of self-discovery that doesn't just have to be like talk therapy. It's really diving deep into how do you translate what your body and your heart and your intuition is telling you. And you can do it with all of your senses. But our imagination is real if you trust it to be the translator. Mm-hmm. And that just I takes totally agreed. Yep. Yeah. We're pretty magical. We're, yes. We are it's naturally. It's a natural mm-hmm. magic. Yes. I really, really hope that we are. all can realize it. And I hope that anybody who's listening, cause I'm sure this, like, I mean, it's definitely, I could identify with a lot of things you said. And I'm sure that man, if there are people out there that didn't identify with at least one thing that was said, <laughs> You need to call, you need to call like right now because friend, but no, I mean, I think that even just, even just getting the, the, the process started of trying to recognize these things, totally. um, yeah, is so true. helpful. Start there, you know, yeah. If, if it resonated with you, like, you know, start there Get curious. and, and be brave, mm-hmm. be very brave. And, and be gentle with yourself. Be gentle. I love it. Uh, and with meditations, if you feel a little bit maybe intimidated or oh, I don't have time for it or I don't really know how to do it, on my podcast, Intuitive Seek, which is a grounded approach to all things intuition. So I just share kind of everything that I of my journey and things that I'm interested in and modalities I hear about and all of these things. I just, my last episode, I just did a deep dive. It's a new series I'm doing called intuitive lab and i did a deep dive into quantum spoon bending and i told so cool all about my experience with it what i thought about it the history of it what i experienced i don't want to give too much away but yeah oh my god i'm i'm I'm, yeah you know what i'm doing tonight (laughs) but on my on my podcast i have so many guided meditations so free resource so many ones to let go of energy, ones for self healing, ones for grounding, ones for clarity. If you sign up on my website for my newsletter, you get a download for a journey that I made to guide you into meeting your wise heart. So it's a way for you to really connect to that wow. space and that wisdom in your heart. So I do have a lot of free resources too. That is so cool. Yeah. I love them. I'm excited to check that out. (laughs) 
so fun. I know there's so much more to say. I want to talk more. <laughs> I feel like we could have multiple. Oh, you're coming back. For yeah, sure. so like, fun. This, is, this is happening. Yeah. We'll see you in Vancouver. I love it. <laughs> M- monthly co-host, we can pick a topic. We could talk about it. Yes. Oh, wonderful. All right. Like every other month or whatever, whatever works. Oh, we're doing that. We're yeah, absolutely stay like, tuned. So stay fun. tuned. There's so many fun things. Right. Oh, my goodness. Like, and, and oh, what's your like intuitive coffee talk with Mary Treen? I don't yeah. know. Like, <laughs> I love it. Something like that. It's good. We'll, we'll oh, yeah. Out. Because we'll I just, like, that's another new thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's another new thing that I just finished actually is I started to just like the Reiki, just like meditation. I started to get this pull to explore end of life doula ship. So being a death doula and I just finished my training. So I just finished it last weekend was our last hours for it. And I have my first volunteering set up at a hospice next week. And I did it because I felt a real call to support emotionally and spiritually the dying but also their families and people whose pets are nearing end of life Uh and supporting them through it because the grief work and the energy work that goes with that is if you are not supported it can be as probably all of us know so just debilitating to your life And especially Mm -hmm. if you are the one dying, which none of us have experienced yet because we're here. But a lot of the times our families aren't equipped to help us understand the meaning of our life, to look back on the legacy, to understand how we want to die. What does dying well even mean? So it's also Mm. setting up the plan for your end of life too. But that's a new thing that I've been called to. And I'll say called because yeah, it is a little bit of a calling. I felt Mm -hmm. a pull, but yeah, so that's a new thing that I'm, because the one thing that I really heard in this training, and it was like 32 hours, was really lovely, beautiful at Douglas College here in Vancouver. And the thing that really stuck out was the um, teacher, she had been 15 years as a death doula. And she said, everyone dies the way they live. So if they're very fearful when they're living, they will be afraid when they're dying. If they know how to surrender and relax and be adaptable, then their death is really peaceful. So that inspired me to be like, yes, we need to live well so we can die as well as possible. So it's not just like a shock when it comes because Mm -hmm. it's where all of us are going. And it's such, it's not a disease. It's part of life. Mm -hmm. It's not a medical issue. Mm-hmm. it's death is a cycle yeah. but in my energy work I know for sure that energy doesn't die right so that energy goes somewhere mm-hmm. and it's still we're able to access it but it's just not in the physical so yes. oh yeah so very a new kind of way that I'm doing my work as well wow. so we'll see that to be uh, determined but that's yeah. gonna be like episode so 34 because we got to build up to that one. Oh yeah like, and wait until I have more experience with it too more practical experience yeah I you know even just just hearing what you said and just now being very curious about the whole thing I'm like just what you said like passing that on um about how that. how oh, you yeah. live is what it's and it sounds so simple right but we make it all we all make it really really difficult we don't have to no no hmm. I, mean, I feel like that's oh. going to be like yeah. through line for all of our conversations how because like letting go of rigidity mm-hmm. letting go of the need to um figure it all out use mm-hmm. our brains have right the logic, right have the have the um quote-unquote acceptable way of moving through things and it's getting comfortable with um, the release of all of that and the inherent discomfort that that initially brings until you get used to the flow. And then you're like, Oh, Oh, yeah, this doesn't have to suck. Yeah. And then you also are there to support friends and family and maybe even strangers in a better capacity. So when you go to work and they go, 
oh, my mom died. You don't go, oh, that sucks. Or, oh, I don't want to be near Susie because she seems pretty sad. So let's leave Susie alone. Mm -hmm. No, like, but we're so terrified that it's like contagious or we don't have the words or, but it's really just presence. Like we're just meant to, we're here to help each other. Mm -hmm. So to feel more comfortable in the uncomfortable is helpful for all of us. It's not just really is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. No more. It's important to know (laughs) yourself. Like, yeah, (laughs) that's why it's important to get to know yourself before you can, you know, really practice this. Like, wow. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Such a circle. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then you give everyone else permission to do the same and then Mm -hmm. people become happier. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I can just focus on me and I don't have to worry about everything else around me. And that's Mm -hmm. how it should be. (laughs) Totally. And when there's like chaos everywhere and when everything's changing and there's no security or stability, you know, in your body, in yourself, like, okay, but as long as I kind of go here, as long as I feel my breath, as long as I know what I need today, even if I don't feel great, that's okay. We're not meant Mm -hmm. to be happy every moment but we need to know what happiness feels like. Right. We need to know that happiness comes after sorrow because yeah. it just does. So it's like Absolutely. trusting the cycles of life and the cycles of our emotions Absolutely. and just, just the experience. Right. right. It's crazy out here. Right. And the ripple effect could just be, yeah. you know, bananas. how, you know, it's like the pass it on thing and it just yes. multiplies. That- yeah, I, I've had this conversation with somebody else where like, we're kind of taught to think that you have to come up with the big idea, yeah. the, the big thing. And like we in, incapacitate ourselves trying to come up with like, go from A to Z that then fits for everyone. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, we think that that's what solutions look like. And, and mm-hmm. it's not, it's, it's the small steps that we take with ourselves that make our lives a little bit better each time that bring us home to ourselves a little bit more and more and more mm-hmm. that then allows us to treat other people with deep compassion um, and gives them permission to do the same, to start making little changes. And then the aggregate effect of that is substantial. Like it's exponential yeah. as more and more people start to look inward and start to be like, Oh, what do I need to be just a little bit better? the yeah. next day and by a better like mary was saying like that doesn't mean you always feeling good it's more of like how do i know the proper place within myself for all of these different things that i'm feeling so yeah. that they flow through and out easily and i don't have to get caught on any one thing yeah Peace. just totally Peace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and because there isn't and one of the reasons there isn't a widespread kind of awareness of this, that we need to find it all for ourselves and what process works for us and that it takes a long time is because it's not very marketable. Right. Like one size fits all oh, can be sold I'm... so easily. Five exactly. steps to this. Easy. A to Z. Mm-hmm. Easy. Buy it. Buy it. But no, yeah. it's not. No, it's, it's not, we're all it's so yours. different. Yeah. yeah. We're all, That's we're our all culture, crazy. you know, and yeah. especially here. I mean, yeah, all that I hacks. would say. And maybe that's, you know, at, like the pendulum swings both ways. So we were oh, at the yeah. height of that. And maybe now, you know, with, we're coming back to ourselves, hopefully a little bit, allowing ourselves to do that. And, you know, hopefully that will be the trend because I think the world will be a much more beautiful and peaceful place if everybody was kind of at least having these conversations, right? It's true. It's so true. Yeah. There's so many great aspects to it. Yeah. So many. Oh, there's so many things to say. Do you know, (laughs) I was just thinking, Corinne, I don't know if you have cards, but should we put, should we pull a card for the Um, audience, a little collective card for us and everyone? Like, um, yeah, if you have one close by, especially if it's an I oracle do. card, that'd be amazing. Yes, I do. That is exactly yes. well, I happen to have my oracle cards oh. right here. <laughs> so let's see what Yeah, because timing wise, even if somebody listens to this in four years, this may be what the message so they were meant to hear is. So let's see what the message is today for all of us and everyone out there. So fun. 
so fun. Oh, you know what? That's so interesting. One thing that I feel a pull to say for anyone out there is if they are, I mean, if they're listening to this podcast, they're obviously very interested in spiritual things, all the woo, all the things. But when you are scared, when there's a fear of speaking it, of saying the thing that you're afraid somebody's going to think is weird or that you're crazy or that you, oh, now you're in that phase. Okay, get your big hat and your pompous grass or whatever. It's like, no. When your heart is beating so fast, when you want to say something, just see if that is not nervousness, but if that's like your life force finally being able to be expressed. Yeah. Because it can feel like something you're meant to swallow because it's so unfamiliar. But when you move past and just speak, even if it's shaking, even if you're terrified of what somebody will say, sharing a creative piece or even just something you think or what you were experiencing or something in a meditation that maybe people think will think is crazy. Say it, just try, just try to say it and see if it's easier the next time and the next time, because that was such a key for me to know that, oh, that excitement is actually like, that's the button of like, yes, this is, this needs to be said. This is it. Did you find that too? Yeah. Yeah. I had that. Yes. I had that big as well, where I was just get so overwhelmed by just wanting to say something, but then I would get it in my head and be like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm just being too much again. Right. And like the process of no longer self-censoring and just being like, all right, this is just me. And, you know, how people react to it is not my responsibility, That's right. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like give that, but it's like, like everything else. It's yeah. a practice of doing that because we're, it is, especially for women to keep yourself safe is to stay silent and yeah. we're letting go of that shit right now. Yeah. Which is what right. we needed. We needed it. We needed to be protected. We needed to right. be safe. Yes. You know, that's why I really one. forgave yeah. my maternal line for being all of those things right? and yeah. instilling them in me. Because they were trying to keep me safe. It wasn't a punishment. They were trying. But it just wasn't needed now. We don't need it anymore. Absolutely. Okay, card. Okay, let's see. All right. What do we need to know? Oh, my God. I love it. This is the empty well card. Time to replenish. This is exactly what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Love it. So when you... This is classic. This is such a classic thing that happens to everyone, but I will say women or more sensitive people, more empathic people, nurturers, the helpers. We really want to reach out and do things for others because it makes us feel good, but it also makes us feel like we're on purpose. When your well is empty, when you do not do anything to refill your energy, When you don't say no, set a boundary, when you do all the things because you think you should, there is nothing of value that you can give to somebody else except for a literal piece of your energy. So then you're well, you start giving the bricks of the well. There's no water left. The well starts totally disintegrating. And that's when people get burnt out. That's when people get incredibly angry and have total compassion fatigue. That's when you just can't move anymore, or you're so frustrated, or you have no patience. It's because you Mm. haven't been taking care of your needs. So right now, somebody out there, it is time to replenish. There is no more output. No more output. If you keep trying to do things, nothing will happen. So don't do anything for anyone else for a moment. Don't do anything. Just Bring things in. What can you receive? Can somebody help you with something? Who is actually there to support you that you are not paying attention to? Reach out for help. You don't have to do it alone. All those things, all those cliches. But it's really true. So is it time to replenish? Do you need to put a thing on your phone to tell you when to go to bed? And actually listen to it. Do you have to parent yourself? 
Yes. Like all of those things. <laughs> what are you resisting? Because you don't want to do it because I don't have time. No, no, I'll do that. X, Y, Z. Do it. Time to replenish. And that also reminds me if anyone out there has been doing something, working on something, relationship, project, a piece of your career, and it hasn't been working, move on. Yeah. Close the door. Put it away. Let it go. Start something new because there's nothing else there. It's empty. So, yeah. yeah. How did that resonate for you guys? She told you, Corinne. No. <laughs> No, I was just kidding about that. No, I think that's like, I that's, think that that's resonates with all that. of us. Yeah, no, it totally, totally resonates. I think everybody can, that's I mean, so I certainly, yeah, stop looking in my windows all the way from Veronica, or I said Veronica, whatever, Vancouver, I meant. Like, yeah, that resonated yeah. with me. Like, I think everybody, a lot of people, and I was actually thinking of people when you were saying that who I know, you know, were really hurt and or hit, experiencing some of these things pretty hard and so it's just kind of sending them some i'm gonna yeah. send them your send them your podcast i yeah. love it oh yeah that was thank awesome you so, so fun thank you so much I love you guys so good yeah i was You're worried i wouldn't have enough energy but of course i did because <laughs> when we talk about this stuff come on it's, like, it's so much fun exactly so that's our thing what are we gonna talk about awesome oh my gosh i can't wait for our next our future follow-up Me too. oh so many yeah. ideas so we should do one on the spoon bending right oh yeah the spoon bending absolutely is i have a whole i made a, I made perspective a of it yeah i can't yeah. wait to listen awesome. to that that because i i have i have my own thoughts on spoon bending and yuri yeah. geller and all of that like I'm really yeah. excited to I don't deep dive, I just kind of touch on. I'm like, well, there's Yuri Geller, because he was like the was the main one. the mentalist, the guy doing it. Yeah. But the what it really taught me was the energetics of what we most people call like manifestation. Right. That's where I really came to. So mm-hmm. are we bending the spoon or is something else happening? Right. Does it work? Teaser. How does it work? Is it Teaser. Real? what is it? Yeah. we'll see love and maybe it. i'll change my mind about it but that's oh, that was great. my conclusion on it yeah i love it ah uh, you're a natural mary i love this <laughs> love it so fun oh well, thank you so much yeah thank no you. thank you we'll talk to Hannah. you again for yeah. sure Yay. it will definitely um, probably be a regular thing like if we're like it. oh shit we need content mary we can just chat instant. we'll just yeah. have a chat yeah I love exactly it. very yeah. organic and wonderful it's that now I just, uh, yeah, because the which way here, I, I just want to quote the craft. <laughs> it just came in my mind. Yeah. Which, perhaps we are all natural witches. Our power comes from within. Girl. Ah. Again, yes. marketing, VP of marketing over here. As much as you don't <laughs> want to do the corporate thing, you know, hear me out. I love it. Well, I awesome. always available for consultation. We'll do awesome. <laughs> love it. All right. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you so uh, thank much. You. Oh, thank Thanks you. Thanks everybody for listening okay. too. Um, yeah. And I, we'll see you next time on uh, Which Way From Here. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Peace and love. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye Mary. <laughs> so fun. Mwah. Thank you so Mwah. much. Oh, Bye. I love you. Bye. <laughs> uh, how good was that interview? Re-listening to that just brought me so much joy and reminds me how lucky I am to have Mary as a friend. She is such a bright light and has such incredible insight into the intuitive process. And I really value her input and the way that she views things. Uh, Amazing, 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 amazing. And I just feel very privileged that she took time to come talk to us and to uh, participate in this podcast shows you just how amazing she is so if you felt drawn to anything that mary said go check her out her instagram is treen t-r-e-e-n light dot healing 
I believe her website is the same name. I will have it in the show notes. She has a bi-weekly newsletter that is fantastic. Oftentimes she says exactly what I need to hear in the moment. And she also offers different courses and of course her one-on-one work. Go check her out. You will not regret it. Thank you for joining us again this week for Which Way From Here. I just feel so honored to have anyone listening at all. Uh, And I'm really excited to continue on this journey and to continue building this community and to bring more amazing voices like Mary's on board uh, because I happen to just be surrounded by really incredible people. So if you enjoyed that interview, just you wait. I have more amazing friends for you all to hear these incredible, complex, interesting perspectives on reality and existence my favorite topics. So until next time, thank you all. We'll see you soon.